Today, I, I want to talk about the Battle of L.A. <laughs> because most people, when you bring up the UFO subject, they right away go to Roswell. Right. And they say Roswell was the start of the UFO phenomenon. And I disagree with that, and I've disagreed with a lot of people. Mm. I say the modern era of the UFO phenomenon started in 1942 mm. with the Battle of L.A., right. not 1947. I agree with and you. And there's a lot of reasons to why that. So, But I want you to uh, talk about the Battle of L.A., film people in. You know, there was a TV, uh, not a TV, a movie, movie that came it, out. Right couple of years ago called uh, Battle, <coughs> Battle LA, not Battle of LA. I heard about it, I thought, oh, this is going to be cool, it's going to be based on the actual incident, <coughs> and then it had nothing to do with right, it. Right. You know, it was just the ships coming in and creatures, and it was just a typical action, you know, sci-fi thriller with no reference to what really happened in 1942. Well, so, Bill, tell us the scenario. What what was the Battle of L.A.? So, because people probably have no idea. What are you talking Battle of L.A.? We haven't had anybody on on U.S. soil uh, since the British. <laughs> well, what happened on uh, February 25, 1942? Uh, radar around Los Angeles picked up an unidentified target 120 miles west of Los Angeles. At that time they thought it was the Japanese coming in so they had the aircraft batteries were alerted at 2.15 a.m. and were put on a green alert a few minutes later. Um, then what happened they had the uh, airplanes, uh, fourth interceptor command w was warming up on the runways waiting to go out and they never left, they never left the ground for some reason. Uh, problem is these planes were never ordered to go into action during the 51 minute period between the first air raid at 2.25 a.m. and the artillery firing at 3.16 a.m. What had happened? They had seen something in the sky. Mm -hmm. Okay, some people identified it. They said it was a light and the width of the light, uh, the object was around 800 feet in length and it looked like an upside down pointed shovel and it had no openings, windows, portholes, hatches, seams, or lights. It had no propellers, exterior motors, or no sound, and had no wings. They actually fired 1,400 rounds at this thing, yeah. and nothing happened. I mean, it <laughs> just go out. Yeah. So there were, there were witnesses, actually. They, they not only had it on radar at uh, 2.25 in the morning, whatever you right. said. They, they had it on radar. They had military people see it, right. and civilian people saw it. Now, it is three months after Pearl Harbor, so right, everybody right. was on edge. But uh, they ended up uh, black, blackening out black the city. Blackening out the whole town. Yeah, yeah. They, think about Los Angeles at right. 3 in the morning is blacked out. And the sirens, the air raid sirens come on. So people are panicking, thinking the Japanese are attacking. And I think they had seen a Japanese sub off well, it of... Fired. It fired the night before, or okay. three days before. Um, I forgot the town, but it actually um, did some damage in the town. And what they were thinking was it's very possible that the Japanese had uh, perfected uh, having airplanes hooked up to a submarine. Hmm. And that's how they got here. Yeah. But they had, I, I got here, I got a, I was an eyewitness to the event of that unforgettable February morning in February of 1942. This guy wrote a big article about this, 45 pages long. Uh, wow. <laughs> I was eight years old at the time my parents lived at 2,500 Strand in Hermosa Beach, right on the beach. Uh, we thus had a grandstand seat. While my father went about his air raid warden duties, my late mother and I watched a glowing object which caught in the glare of the searchlights from both uh, Pellas Verdes and Malibu, and surrounded by puffs of ineffectual, in, ineffectual anti-aircraft fire as it slowly flew across the ocean from northwest to southeast. It headed inward over Rodeno Beach a couple miles to the south of our vantage point and eventually disappeared over the east end of Palo Verde Hills, today what is called Rancho Palos Verde. The whole incident lasted, at least from our perspective, about a half an hour, so we didn't have to time it. Like other kids in the neighborhood, I spent the next morning picking up pieces of shrapnel on the beach. Indeed, it's a wonder more people weren't injured by this stuff, as we were far from the only folks standing outside watching the action. In any case, I don't recall seeing any truly discernible configuration, just a small glowing, uh, slight lounge-shaped blob light, a single blob. We saw one object, not several, as some witnesses reported later. At the time, we were convinced that it was a Jap reconnaissance plane, and the L.A. may be due for a major air raid in the near future. 
Remember, this was less than three months after Pearl Harbor, but of course it never happened. Later on, we expected them, but that is the military to tell us that what was really up there was war, but that never happened either. Also, um, <clears throat> as a result of this, six people died. Yeah, yeah, there were 15 objects actually seen, right. 15, right. and six people died. Right. Uh, there was three actually- Three from heart attacks and three yeah. from- uh, Shrap metal. Shrap metal, yeah. Yeah, they'll think about that. I mean, you're in LA, you just had the Japanese uh, firing up the coast at, mm. at us, and now all of a sudden at three in the morning, the, the city's blacked out, sirens are going. I don't know what the population of LA was in 1942, no. half a million people, whatever. Everybody's waking up, you think this is it. You all of a sudden start hearing the anti-aircraft gun, ba-boom, ba-boom, mm -hmm. 1,433 rounds. So three people had heart attacks. Right. Either, no, there might, maybe three people a day die of heart attacks anyhow in LA, right, I don't right. know. But three people were hit by shrapnel. Right. Can you imagine that? It, it came down and, and it, it hit people. Right. It killed three people from, from the uh, shrapnel. It's actually, it's incredible. And that went on for hours, yeah, right? Well, they said it was actually 10 ton of uh, ammunition that was fired at the thing. But what was really interesting... Five hours. Right. It, it went from 2.25 a.m. to 7.21 a.m. Right. Unbelievable. And, but but never, nothing ever happened with it. Nothing yeah. came down. I mean, it's still yeah. up there. So. Well, there's a famous picture, and, you know, I don't know if the audience can see this picture, right. but uh, what you have is this object, and it, you can see the dome shape of the object. You can mm. see it in the picture. There's eight of the, of the lights on it, but the thing is, you can see the object. All the little points of light around it is the actual shrap metal, you know, the, right. the blast exploding that they were shooting up there. And what was interesting with this case is Sci-Fi Channel, Fact or Faked, mm. did an episode on this. And what they said was the fact that the light hits it and the light doesn't go past, doesn't, that's a solid object. Right, the right, light right. was on it, no. it stopped right there, it didn't continue off into the sky. That was a solid, and you can see it. When you go in there, absolutely a craft, and it had right. a dome on top. And so they are hitting it. You could look at the picture. Right. They're hitting it. Yeah. They're, it's yeah. blowing up all around right. it. It's not that high. So uh, the thing is, we can't shoot it down. <laughs> we can't shoot this thing down. And uh, the actual, uh, what happened was, and this is how it was in all of the cases back then, the newspapers got the information right. from the military. Right. You know, Roswell was, they got the story. This stuff made front page news. And right. here's the LA Times from uh, February to probably the 26th, because it's the next day. And the headline says, Army says alarm real, roaring guns mark blackout. So there's the, the LA Times newspaper on this. now. You know, nowadays, can you get the uh, front page, no, uh, no. Washington Post, LA Times? But all of the major cases back then, the uh, newspapers got their information from the military. Right. And then two days later, the military always changed the story and said it's to not what it was. What it was. <laughs> it, it, not, it's not what it was. But, you know, they're, they're great picture headlines, you know, and you know, a lot of the NASA people like James Oberg, et cetera, they scoff at this case. He says, this is little u, u, little f, little o for UFO. This is a major case and there's more to it that we're gonna talk about, yeah. So what else, uh, what else the, the transpired uh, with this? Well, like I say, you had, you had, um Well, you know what, you made, a, you made a comment about first time. There's three firsts with this case. Mm. All right, and this is important because mm. everybody, like I said, everybody says Roswell. Well, what you know, what was this? Roswell. You know, they, didn't they just do the uh, National UFO Day? Right. Right. Initially, it was June twenty fourth of Kenneth Arnold sighting. Now they changed it to July second for Roswell. Right. I'm so tired right. of hearing about Roswell. Well, you know? Roswell got a lot of problems too. It, it does. Yeah. You but know? get this. I, I did some research in, into this, and uh, you know, I put it in in my book. And uh, this was the first time we fired on a UFO. Right. The first time we officially denied that it, it was a UFO. And get this, this is probably the most important one. The following day, they said it was a weather balloon. Mm -hmm. It was the first time we used the weather balloon excuse. Not Roswell, when people say Roswell, because that oh, it was a weather balloon. Mm. It was a battle of LA. Right. And right. That, that makes this case, to me, 
the most significant case. Right. First time we fired at one, first time we denied it was a UFO, and the first time we used the weather balloon excuse. So I, I thought that was uh, unbelievable. But here's, here's what happened, and it, it, it's so cool. Uh, and it's why we're a free country with freedom of the press. So they, the following day, they come out, and, and it's actually a newspaper article that says, you know, it was a weather balloon. So they have a press conference, and the, uh, it was the Army that was firing. Right, right. They come out and say that it, it was a weather balloon. They did release three weather balloons 12 hours earlier right, in right. the afternoon. So those weather balloons now 12 hours uh, earlier, they're, they're up by Sacramento. They're, they're not even in the area anymore. But... Typically, what they do is they'll take something and say, <laughs> you know, we heard that, you know, all this through weather, had to be a weather balloon, right? So mm. they released these weather balloons. But here's what the, uh, the, the, the newspapers and the radio shows, because they had a press conference on it. So they described the whole thing and they said it was a weather balloon. So the, the response from the media, which is cool, says, if you can't shoot down a weather balloon at 9,000 feet with nearly 1,500 rounds, then how are you going to protect us from a Japanese invasion? Oh, I agree. You can't agree. hit a weather balloon. <laughs> and they were hitting it, right? right? So they were. That, that's like the coolest line as yeah. far as the debunking goes. You know, you tell me it's a weather balloon, but that's like us firing um, a nuclear missile. At right. some, and you can't take a weather balloon down with a nuclear missile? How is that possible? It, it wasn't possible because it wasn't well, weather balloons. But I, I think back in them days, a lot of people didn't understand what even weather balloons were. No, they, they didn't understand anything about <coughs> that. You know, whatever the government said, they believed, so they, they just went along with it. And, and uh, you know, and that's, that's the way, especially you got to figure with World War II back in that time, people believed anything the government said. I mean, up until recently, you know, you couldn't say something bad about the post office because no. you're talking bad right, about right, the government, right. you know, in certain parts of the country. You, you know, you could, what do you mean? You don't have to talk bad about the government and the post office. So, but again, I got two other points I want to make, but tell me what you yeah, got. Yeah, well, you got, you got here, um, right after that, they sent a top secret uh, memorandum to the president. Um, I have considered the disposition of the material and possession of the Army that may have great significance toward the development of super weapons of war. I disagree with the argument that such information be shared with our ally to the Soviet Union, consultation with uh, somebody and other scientists, the issue finding further discussion. I therefore authorize Dr. Bush to proceed with the project without further delay. This is right after that. So whatever they got. Vannevar Bush. Right. Um, any further discussion matter will be restricted to General Donovan, Dr. Bush, and the Secretary of War, and yourself. That's to President Roosevelt. And then. A couple weeks after that, it says less than two weeks after the above message, Marshall, General Marshall, sent another top secret memo to the President regarding the air raid over Los Angeles, stating, it was learned by the Army G-2 that Rear Admiral Anderson recovered an unidentified airplane off the coast of California with no bearing, with no bearing of conventional explanation. The headquarters come to the determination that the mystery airplanes are not earthly and according to secret intelligence sources, they are all probably interplanetary origin. And that, to me, that, that's, that's why what I say. They sent to the president. Yeah, this is so important. Right. That memo was sent by a general, General right. George Marshall. Right. Right. right? So right. here you have a general. Just think about General Petraeus or, or one of the other generals right. we have today. You know, he sends this memo on March 5th. You know, saying that uh, we recovered a saucer off the coast, and it's not. Earthly, right, right. <laughs> you know, that's well, it's why an airplane. This is... they, it's not a conventional airplane. It's, yeah, they think it's interplanetary. Yeah, and they yeah. think it's interplanetary. Right. Right. And uh, here's something else that's very important, and nobody ever talks about this. Is also in this memo from General Marshall, he recommends that we start a group called the Interplanetary Phenomenon Unit (IPU). Right, and it is formed because there's a number of uh, me memos that come up after, mm. and, and Dr. Robert Wood, who's on the board of MUFON, has found right. a number of memos where they reference the IPU, the Inter Interplanetary mm. Phenomenon Unit. Mm. So how is this not the start of the modern UFO era in 1942? Well, but I it think, has to be. Well, I, I think what happened, this happened, and then Roswell came along. Well, Roswell Five years was later. Brought, Roswell was brought up 30 years later, 
Okay, it's it's like another. It sat for thirty years. Yeah, yeah, yeah it sat. It's like another episode we have here. Mm -hmm. And, and they made it big. I don't think Roswell was as big as it was until people start actually investigating it. Nobody really ever investigated this. But yeah. Roswell was something they could get their hands into. Yeah, and I think know? it was Stanton Friedman in 1978 or 79 yeah. that uh, he was just like accidentally, I think he was down there doing a conference, and somebody said to him, you need to interview this Jesse Marsal guy right. who had a piece of Roswell. Right. You know? But let's hold off on Roswell. There's one more important point to this that I think is hugely significant. When, uh, you know, it's funny, like I said, the Sci-Fi Channel Factor Faked mm. did a show on whether this was real. As a matter of fact, they said right. it was real, right. based on the fact that the lights were on the object, it was close enough to be shot down, and it, they couldn't take it down. They said this was all real. But, now, uh, get this, and I found this, nobody has ever made this connection, and I was hoping that somebody would make this connection for the TV show. Right. You know, and this is like stuff with Hangar One. They get their scripts and stuff, and I say, well, wait a minute, there's more to it. Right. Like, right. I, I, I made the connection between Ronald Reagan's diary right. and McKinnon, where the diary said 300, we have a, a space crew of 300, and that's what McKinnon found when he hacked into the, the Pentagon right, computers. Right, right. But we have five sh space shuttles that hold eight. That's 40. Reagan said 300. So right. that's real. He was trying to tell us. So uh, I'm reading this. You know, right. this is called the Fire Officer's Guide to Disaster Control. Right. Right. It's a FEMA approved hazmat book. If you read it, it's actually cool. It tells the fire department what to do in case of a flood, tornadoes, hurricanes, ice storms, whatever it is, fires, whatever. So there's a 10-year-old kid in 1942 who witnesses the Battle of L.A. And you know who he is? You got to write the book there, yeah. William M. No, excuse me, Charles W. Bomby. J.D., B-A-H-M-E. Right. Right. He witnesses it. So I'm reading this, and he said he included a chapter in the FEMA-approved Fire Officer's Guide to Disaster Control. You open it up, chapter 13 in right. this book right. is on UFOs. And let me tell you exactly what it says. Chapter 13, enemy attack and UFO potential. The threat, uh, adverse potential, emergency action, and conclusions. And it's uh, that that part of the, of it on UFOs is 13 pages, right. and it's chapter 13. Now this guy, you know, he's not just Joe right, Schmo. Right, right, right. Charles Balmy is uh, he goes on to become a naval officer. Right. He goes on to become an attorney, and he he becomes the deputy fire chief of Los Angeles. Right. So he teams up with William Kramer, who's the uh, PhD, mm. who's the uh, fire chief of Cincinnati, right. and they write this book. So what better witness would you have than this guy at 10 saw the Battle of LA, thought it was so important, he included it in the hazmat book. This book is in every fire department in the country. But you talk to the firemen and they'll say they, they ignore it. nothing. Yeah, they, they yeah. don't even look they at it. They ignore it. it. They don't but even you know what? It. You know, I'll ask you then, where's the chapter on ghosts and the potential attack? Where's, the, where's the chapter on poltergeist, demons, and angels, and how to handle it? It's not. The right. only paranormal thing, unexplained thing in here is UFOs. on UFOs. Right, right. And I think, you know, that's why when the skeptics, well, uh, I got news for you. It's in the fire department's hazmat book. I got news for you. There was a course taught at the uh, Air Force Academy in Colorado. That's my proof. Right, I, right, show right. me. Yeah, yeah, show no, me no, yeah. I know you're a big Bigfoot yeah. guy. Show me the Ar Ar Army manual talks about how, where does the manual that says how to handle the Bigfoot attack when they start coming in with their sticks. They won't there show isn't. Us. There they isn't. Won't show they won't hear. Well, there isn't one. <laughs> but I'm just saying, it's there. It's there for that. And I but, think but, that. But like I say, John, with this, I, I think that a lot of people, they they like your firemen. Okay, they'll read this, and I think deep down inside they're thinking about it, but they don't want to come out and say, you know. I mean, it's like I talk to a lot of people, you know, about it, and and you know, a lot of firemen. And I mean, I'll say, well, you got it in your, your, your training manual. Oh, I've never seen it in there. Well, just go look at it's it. It's there. You know? And then they'll come back and they'll say, well. We don't take it serious. Well, yeah, we don't. Yeah. I mean, 
unless something happens, then they're going to start taking it seriously. Well, and, and that's why the and, author put it there. He right. said this has, he, and he wrote in there, he was a witness. Yeah. And this has to be in there. There has right. to be some protocols. What to do if they come back? That's why he put it in there. But I, I think that chapter should also be involved in a police manual. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of the stuff in there should actually be within the police department so they know what to do too because they'd be the first on the scene. But again, you know, I think that a lot of your police are starting to open up to the possibility right mm -hmm. now. But firemen are still, you know, and, and the government is still saying that it don't exist. Yeah. And well, a lot of people believe them. I mean, they're a government, you know. So. Well, that's why, you know, when you think about it, the, uh, the, the, just think about that. The fire department, I could just imagine, you know, I was head of security at UPS. If somebody told me, in, here's your procedure guide, but I don't take Chapter 13 serious. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, oh, you don't. Yeah. You don't take a hazmat material found in your building serious? Right. You better take it serious. That's the mm -hmm. way I would look at it. Every one of the things in here, you better take serious. Right, right. It's FEMA approved and it's important. But, so that's really how the government backfired by debunking UFOs and making fun of UFOs, we end up with uh, the fire department not taking UFOs seriously. Right. That's right. a problem. Yeah. Yeah, That's a is. huge problem. It is. You know? And, but, but again, I mean, I, I think it's going to take, it's actually going to take a craft to land and something to happen before they start taking it seriously. Yeah. Well, that's and, unfortunate. But that, that falls back on the Air Force and the CIA that debunked this for years, right. that when it's like crying wolf, Fred, you, you cry wolf, you cry wolf, you make fun of every case, you, you, te you make up the, the worst explanations possible, balloons, swamp gas, you know, uh, moon dogs, sun dogs, whatever you want to call it, heat inversions, and, and they're not even possible when you looked right. into it. So then when you get the real case, I think they caused more damage. I understand why they're doing it. Mm. They don't want to panic. They don't right, want right, you know right. crowd control, et cetera. But what happens when it, it shows up and they're here to make contact? People have not been orientated to believe this, but it happens like, you know, like Bill had said in, in the previous show, you know, this happens in Pennsylvania 50 right. times a day we get a case, 600 cases a month. 10,000 cases around the world. But, but I, like I said, I think people are starting to realize more and more that there may be something out there. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I think a lot of people are looking at the government now saying, you know, they are, you know, they're lying about it. I mean, there's no doubt about it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, again, they're the ones that have the broadcast on TV. They're the ones that got all the stuff there. So they're the ones that got all the, all the you know, um, what you call it, the... Well, but didn't the uh, the fact that we have the internet? That's why people now are believing this, right? Right. Because, because you have alternative yeah. TV, right. you have alternative channels. People go to the internet. The second most Google thing on the internet is UFOs. Yeah, That's see, where people are getting their information. But I think a lot of it is they have a lot of people that give false information, and then somebody that's actually starting to believe this goes into something that's false. And they're saying, oh my God, the other day this happened here, and then everybody laughs at them. Yeah. You're still having it. I mean, people, the problem is disinformation is everywhere. Yeah. Well, you know, you, know, it, you get, like we said, 80% of our cases are explainable. Right. I believe about 10% of the cases are hoaxes and fabrications right. and stories. So you're really only left with 10, 10%. Right. So, you know, in Pennsylvania, we get 300 cases. It's 30 cases that are the real I think UFO. I well, think somewhere around there, 50 yeah. cases. You know, you're basically looking at one case a week, 52, you know? You're, you're, in, in Pennsylvania right now, we're starting to get a lot of uh, cases where they're actually having alien contact. Yeah. I mean, which is totally different than even last year, year before last. I mean, now the aliens are allegedly coming down and talking to some of these people. Mm -hmm. It's like the case we got again with me and well, Sam, where the lady thing came down and burned her hand. Mm -hmm. I mean, again, they're putting things into people's heads now and stuff. So we're not really talking about crap. We're talking about things landing, people talking to them, and the whole nine yards there. Yeah. Well, you know, I kind of keep an eye on uh, what does. NASA and them say, when they start telling you that Kepler found a planet just like Earth, a little larger, a little closer, I believe it was, to their sun, based on the fact that their sun was larger, right, the planet's right. larger, it's basically the same environment. I'm saying to myself, they're getting ready to right. tell you. 
But don't you think that's odd too? What's his name? The guy in a wheelchair. Um, yeah, yeah, I know who you're talking about. Two yeah. days before that, they're going to spend a billion dollars to find another planet. And that's and all to get him the billion dollars. Yeah. And then <laughs> two years, two days later, they find the planet. I yeah. mean, you know, really. Yeah, well, I believe. Yeah. yeah, I agree. That was like when Clinton yeah. first said, made that announcement that they found had a moon rock that came up yeah. in the Antarctic, and when they cut it open, there are bacteria in it. Yeah. So there's life right. in space. He got all the funding to do this right. stuff, and that's. A lot well, like, of times you have to look at it with a grain of salt but because like there's said money Reagan, behind yeah, everything. Reagan with the 300, there is another space program. Oh, I agree. That we're you. not, we're not, you know, privy to, you. and they've been to Mars already, I believe. I, I agree with you that know, also. They've been there, and they're, you know, it, it's there. And I'll give you a good example. Yeah. December of 2012, I'm watching CNN, one of the news channels, and they show the X-37B right. landing. It's right. a drone space shuttle. It's right. been up since 1999. Right. Right. They first told you about it. That's why when Anderson Cooper says, says when I was on his show, well, the government's incompetent, can't hide anything. I disagree. Oh, yeah, they the can hide anything. Pentagon, the intelligence yeah. communities are world class. So I'm sitting there looking at this thing. We have a drone remote control space shuttle coming down, landing on an aircraft carrier. Right. Who knew that was up there? Nobody. And if they're telling you about that, what do you think they really have? They ran this thing for 12 years, 13 years. We don't need it anymore because we got the anti-gravity right, craft right. now. But you remember back in the 60s, they had the U-2. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, not the U-2, the... Um, yeah, the spy planes. No, the... Um, the Blackbird, the U-2. It was a little 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 plane they used to drop off of there and it would start flying. It was like the one you just landed. Okay. Yeah. So if they had that back in the 50s, what capabilities do they have today? Well, yeah, I'm telling I mean, you. Yeah, well, that's when Anderson said that, uh, you know, we, we covered up the Manhattan Project like right, we should have. Right. You know, the stealth bomber, right. 12 years before we brought it out, the X-37B, 12 years before we brought right. it out. So, so, Fred, typically, when we say we're going to cover Roswell and... Did we ever finish cattle mutilations? Did we actually? We're next gonna do that month. in the next, next show. Month. All right. Next month. Well, we can't get to Roswell because that's our show. <laughs> Thanks.